Johnny guys, and today I'm talking about the new Foxeer toothless camera. Now, this might be called the toothless camera, but it has an awful lot of bite. At 1200 TV lines, this full weather camera, as is described on the rear case of the camera, why is it full weather? Or shouldn't it be like all weather? I mean, who are they getting to translate these? Fox here, please contact me if you need me to give you a better description for this, which you obviously do. But while making camera descriptions for their products is not their forte, making an excellent image is. Um, Fox here and run cam go head to head constantly trying to beat the other one out at who is the best at racing cameras well on the freestyle side that is still kind of going on as well the micro eagle has long been reigning as one of the champions of the freestyle camera market caddox came out with their rattel which was also very very good but in my mind, Foxeer really, I mean, the Falcor is also very, very good. Um, a lot of people would say the Falcor 2 even better, but they decided to just go all out and put a half inch sensor in this thing. A half inch sensor with a ginormous lens. It's saying that it's five megapixels. Is that true? This is a 1.7 millimeter lens, so super wide, getting an incredible field of view. So here we have a look at this toothless camera. It's using Foxeer's new case design, which seems to be a lot more robust than the previous. You can see full weather camera on there. Uh, very, very cool. Let's take a quick look at what comes in the box. There's some instructions that I'm never gonna read. Cool stickers. Here is the little controller to be able to control your settings. The camera connector that of course I'll never use because these are pretty much garbage. And it comes with your little bracket uh, that no one also uses in 2020. Standard fare right here. Let's take a quick comparison next to the Micro Eagle. So if you put these next to each other see the micro eagle lens actually sticks out a little further you see that very interesting oh wait wait i'm wrong here i should be comparing the camera holes so the camera holes are actually like that so it does stick out just a tad further but not like a ton the lenses seem to be a pretty good size i believe this is a glass lens i don't think this is glass but uh, it's still really one of the better lenses I've seen on the market. Um, these are really both great, great cameras. They're both also huge. Here is a nano um, run cam camera, just to give you a size comparison and just how small these cameras are, are getting now. Look how small that thing is. Very tiny indeed. And, you know, I'm constantly bringing things out to the field uh, for testing for the channel. And we did some social distance racing. Um, yesterday, I had four people out. We all sat about eight or ten feet apart uh, to be completely safe during this lockdown. And I don't really talk about it much. Nobody cares at this point anymore in my local community. Uh, about this some of the stuff that I always had but before we started racing I was flying this freestyle quad around my source one build and I just had to say to Miguel hey hey hey, hey jump on my channel look at this camera because uh, it was that good that's not really something I ever really point out to anybody what I'm working on because nobody cares but in this case I had to say take a look and the camera image on this thing is so incredibly good. Um, later on in the day, Miguel also tried out the DJI system a little bit. And uh, I asked him, and Miguel has also tried the DJI system. So I asked him, how does this compare to that image? And he was like, you know, 
It's definitely not as good. It's not. But there are things about this image that are so close. Even things like rendering those little tiny blades of grass. Sometimes on a camera like this, because the latency is so low, you can actually get a little bit better of an image. Now, the majority of the time, everything is, of course, going to be better on the DJI. But it felt almost like I was flying something uh, that was a step above your average FPV camera. The colors, the sharpness, the resolution my goodness the light handling it simply looked beautiful i really wish i was more into installing dvrs directly on these because i have a feeling that the dvr image of this camera would look simply amazing but as it is going through rapid wire and into my immersion rc power play dvr that's the footage you're going to be viewing right here and I have to say, I'm going to show you a little bit of comparison between the Eagle and the Rattel. What do you think, guys? What do you think is the best one? This is really impressive. Now, make no mistake, it is probably the heaviest, uh, but most notably is it's also the biggest. So as you can see, the camera that I had on here before was the Foxier Micro Aero Pro. That fit perfectly with inside the cage of this frame and was protected. But this one, the lens is so far out that if I did have a direct on crash, I would smash this gigantic lens. I would smash it to pieces. And so I would either need to have a different camera mount that would bring this camera a little bit further back in order to get full protection. But that's just a note. I mean... Wow, very impressive Fox here. And this is probably one of the best products you guys have released in a while. Good job. Thanks, guys.